First order of business is to review and approve the minutes of our April 6th meeting. And I believe we were all there at that meeting. Yeah. So, uh, so I make a motion to approve. Okay. Minutes. going around should be all getting signed and Patty you want to tell us about our current status? Sure, so there are seven warrants tonight totaling $97,813.34. <clears throat> you also have some um, payroll warrants to sign so that we don't have to chase you down in the summer. Okay. Um, and um, right now I am uh, beginning to um, calculate our year-end funds that could be available for uh, for expenditure. Um, we do know we will have to cover the lunch loss, which through March is $1,600, which is is That's not really bad. Good. We're, we're good. Right, um, and of course, any bad debt at the end of the year. So I, I, I will always remind my teachers, I hope your name's not on that list when I get it. Um, <laughs> and also, I will be working with Janine and with Mr. Lesko to see if there's any building projects or technology needs for the uh, school. So I'll have a more full report for you uh, in June. So the 1600 doesn't include bad debts? No. Quote unquote bad debts. That's just the ongoing loss. Correct. Okay. All right. And you're not seeing anything? No, no, we're going to, I know, I can tell you right now, we're definitely going to have some savings in the, um, in our transportation because again, um, the jump off point for our fuel, we've, we've had credits all year long for our fuel credit adjustment. So we're going to definitely have savings in our transportation line. Okay. We could be a little over our sped transportation. So I've just got to calculate that out for May and June. And, yep. um, yep. But we'll definitely have it. We, I, I would say we. I know we have about fifteen thousand dollars worth of savings right there. Okay, good. That's good. Okay. So at our next meeting, will administration be thinking about capital projects? Uh, not so much or capital projects, but building projects um, that we've put off doing right now until we knew what we had left. So we've been in a repair deferred mode. maintenance. Type Correct. Thing. And we did, at the annual town meeting, we were awarded three capital projects. Mm -hmm. um, we will get $6,500 to fix the uh, drainage at the front entrance. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, capital committee of Deerfield is giving us two projects, first of five years, 12500 to start replacing all our locks, and additional 17000 to start replacing over five years all the carpeting and all of the, um, all the flooring in, right. in, throughout the school building. So we're very appreciative of that. Yep. Okay. And our budget was passed, as you all know, you were there. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Very well. Okay. Anybody have any questions for? No. Nope. Okay. Okay. All, right. okay. all right. Next thing on our agenda is public comment. Do we have any <coughs> public comment? Um, I was just uh, wondering about communication about the music teacher. I know that there's a lot of rumors going around. Um, my daughter has said some rumors. Um, so I just was wondering if there's going to be any communication about the music teacher and what we should be telling our children. Okay. So um, it sounds like you're raising a, a personnel issue, which this committee really doesn't have um, input on, but I would suspect that um, um, as soon as the administration has something to say about that or there's news about the issue that you raise, that would be forthcoming. So, um, and I guess I'd add if there is going to be further public comment about that, uh, we should be very uh, cognizant of people's privacy rights um, and be uh, very careful about what you say, and perhaps not even using names, given that uh, this is a broadcast public uh, forum. So just be cognizant of those things. Um, but anybody else have any 
I think it comment? speaks to a larger issue of communication. Um, <clears throat> and what I've noticed in my, I have two children in the school district. I have a fourth grader and I have a first grader. So I've been here for a little while. Um, yeah, I, I, what I'm seeing is teacher and staff morale going down with each passing year. And some of it has to be communication happening among the staff, but I also feel like I don't really know often what's going on. Um, I'm, I'm PTA president too, so, um, but re what really hurts is just to see that the, to see the teaching staff not not be as happy as they used to be. So certainly, and I understand there are privacy issues, and I know there are some things that can't be said, pending litigation or whatever, um, but I think some sort of communication would have been warranted. Um, it's very upsetting for the kids, and it's upsetting for the parents. And one of the things that I really, really value about this school is its music and art education programs. And this, to me, makes me feel like that might be on the line and that this might be a way to reduce the program or cut the program in some way. And I just want to have that on record that I do not want to see that happen. So whatever happens with this particular situation, I don't want to see this being the end of the music program as we know it. It's what makes this school very strong. Great. And there's a, lot, there's a lot of research out there on how music helps children learn and helps make those connections in the brain. Right. Okay. So um, I guess I just, not that this is a back and forth, but just there is no, um, I think everybody on the school committee who would uh, have a say in um, curriculum and or budget issues um, would agree that music is vital to this school. And I guess I would just reiterate that there are some personnel issues that can't be discussed, but in terms of programmatic <coughs> musical issues, I think that this, certainly speaking as myself, you know, we'd rather cut math before we cut music in the school. <laughs> so, um, you know, I think that it, this is really not an issue. No offense to the math teachers. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> math teachers. Are there, math teachers. But, but I, I would really, um, uh, communication is always a key thing. It's a vital thing. If you're the PTA president, I, you know, this, traditionally we've had, I would say, very good communication. So what I, you need to meet with the administration to talk about that or meet with the past PTA president who, you know, the communication seemed to be Great, I would do that. But I would be very careful when we're in a period like this where there are a lot of unknown questions that, that we don't start talking about things that there's no evidence for. And so there is really no evidence whatsoever that there's any threat to a uh, music program in this school. So I'll just make that but clear, Prior for, in terms of priorities. But I think that's what, when there's no communication, then the, the <clears throat> rumors start going, and then the morale, sure. like you can see the it's domino a, effect happening. And, I, and again, I think this is one issue, but this has been, a communication with parents has been constant. And again, I have a fourth grader and a first grader, and I do agree that it has just um, gone downhill mm -hmm. each year. And so there's some type of systemic problem that's happening. And it, it's unfortunate that this is what we're talking about. But, you know, I have brought up before bullying and communication between parents and, and that. So that this is, this is a major issue. And usually, you know, I do come here and I see more, I usually see more teachers here. So I, I think this is a big, a big issue. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, again, thank you for your comments. I mean, you know, there seems to be two separate issues there in terms of communication, but um, obviously we should all strive to communicate as best we can. And um, I think if 
<coughs> it was possible to communicate about certain issues, um, uh, there would be uh, communication uh, about it. But when it comes to personnel issues, there are real privacy <coughs> interests at stake. So um, sometimes it's just not possible to do it until it's possible to do it. Um, okay, so uh, <coughs> we're going to move along then with our um, rest of our agenda. Um, we have no unfinished business, I don't think. Uh, in terms of new business, um, <coughs> who's going to tackle this? There is uh, discussion authorizing the establishment of a student activities account uh, under a policy that we have. Does anybody from the administration want to take that? Do you want to take that? Yeah. Okay. Um, Tell so us what that's about. Prior to Dr. Carey's um, arrival, uh, we, uh, the administration has started working with our principals around the new laws around student activity accounts. And most of our schools um, don't have them. Um, and I think that was because years ago, um, they were sort of taken away from the schools because there are other parts of the state there was mismanagement of funds. Um, and because of that, what happened is some of our, our PTA associations started becoming our student activity account holders and we need to separate that again. So we provided a uh, two hour training for each of our principals around student activities and what the laws are and what the accounts are to be used for. And the school committee has a policy, uh, JJF, which authorizes us to have them. Uh, and this would separate the fundraising that classes do from the fundraising that the PTA does. Um, and it, it's just to separate the monies into two distinct streams. So if the PTA wants to help us with a, with a field trip, w instead of hold being the keepers of all the money, we would just say to them, well, if you would like to pay the transportation, here's the bill, you do that. Mm -hmm. And then the principal would be collecting the monies. They, and we are working hand in hand with uh, Barbara Hancock, who is the treasurer of Deerfield. Um, and we'll be coming up together with uh, some procedures to go along. So all the monies would be deposited with the town and Janine would have control of a checkbook uh, and we're recommending, the, the law allows 25,000, we don't want it to be that high, we're recommending $10,000. So that Janine has the ability to help her, to her teachers go on field trips without having to go through that warrant process. Um, because we don't always have time and, and the Bronx Zoo doesn't take a PO. Um, and so teachers have been putting out some of their cash and then and on credit cards and then having to wait to get reimbursed and that's not a great system either. So this will allow us to streamline the process. And then monthly Janine would um, ask, show the receipts that she paid out and then the treasurer would refill her checking account. Uh, Janine will also be required to be bonded um, because she will be the keeper of some cash. So this is something we've been working on for over two years, and we're hoping to get it in place uh, with July for, for July 1st um, with Ms. Hancock from the town of Deerfield. Okay, so it has no impact then on, on PTA doing their own fundraising activities no, and we're just having taking their own their... monies to support the school with special things that they want to do. Correct. We're taking the, they've asked for this because mm -hmm. they, they don't like being the keeper of, of the money. <coughs> but we're actually, technically, we're not supposed to be Correct. holding funds that have nothing to, to do, do with, with us. Right. right. Okay. And a lot of that has been. As a nonprofit, we're not allowed to. So they're in compliance, we're in compliance, okay. and it's something they've been asking for. Okay. And, and just to make a correction to something that you said, I don't think that an invoice would be coming to the PTA to pay for transportation. We would just write a check for that account for you guys to pay for that. Correct? That's that my understanding. Plan. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, okay. We'll work that out. This is a revolving fund, I it's, uh, it's. I don't think it's a, 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 a it's not part of the annual budget. What do they call no. no, 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 no. Um, it would have, I, I, and I don't even think it's a revolving account because I don't think we have to reauthorize it every year either. Um, I, I think they call it, a, I want to say, a fiduciary account because it, it, she's hold, uh, the principal holds money for the students. Okay. We'll call it a fiduciary. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So we'll be bringing that for your vote in June, and it was just, you know, for conversation, uh, you know, we bring it to you in May, and we'll vote it in June. Okay. Okay. And is that something that, um, between now and then, or has there already been discussion with the teachers about this, or is that the next step in terms of how things would work going forward with 
We were going to wait till we get the procedures in place that, that Ms. Hancock um, was comfortable with yeah. so that we're all on the same page. So our next step now, Janine and myself and the treasurer will start working out the procedures. And then uh, I believe uh, Janine was going to present it to the teachers. Yeah, at we would change the procedures in the staff handbook and talk yeah. about a faculty meeting right. early okay. next school year. Yeah. Okay. And so and, and our, what you're going to ask us to do at the next meeting is vote on just approving this policy, but then obviously you're setting up the account, but then you guys are going to work on the details of Correct. how it's all Technically, you don't need to vote it because you have a policy, but Ms. Hancock <coughs> would feel better if she had a vote. And yeah, that's so, what I was going to ask you, because it seems these, like this is already a policy it is. in our <laughs> big policy. It would right, make okay. her more comfortable if she had a vote, so I told her I would try. bring it forward. I think these were updated when... You know, Marty left, right? Yeah, with, with all that yeah. policy change. Um, yeah. the, these accounts, you know, uh, from from Barbara Hancock's point of view, are, are she doesn't mean too anxious to to do these no. because these tend tend to have a, have, have issues. Um, but I think if we put solid policies in place and can oversee it well. Correct. And, and, and so, like I said, Janine had to sit, well, she attended a two-hour training that was very, last year, that right. was very in-depth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, very engaging. <laughs> so, can I just ask, uh, I'm just curious, a limit of 10000 I mean, is this something that, um, like, nature's classroom money would go into? And be, and we could that, do that. Wouldn't that possibly be more than 10000 how much that cost? What that's got well, to be. we're saying she cannot issue one check in more than one. One check cannot total more than ten thousand dollars. Oh, okay, is that being paid out? Of it? Correct. Okay. Okay. So the account can have as much as it needs to. Okay. It just says to discuss authorize the establishment of a student activities account with a limit of ten thousand dollars. And like I said, the loss the is twenty five. Right. We're setting it at ten. A nature's classroom that's several checks, one to the place and one to the, one to the okay. transportation so company. It's, it's, not, yeah. it's not one huge yeah, check. Yeah. But it does talk about maximum balance limits on here. Mm -hmm. the, the, all the cash is going to be kept at the at the town hall. Right. So all that's ever going to be in the checkbook is ten thousand okay. dollars. Yeah, she, so I think it's a fill up. So it's kind of like uh, she'll write checks out of it. Um, present those to Barbara or whoever's the treasurer and then the treasurer will then fill back up the Correct. account. So there won't ever be a you know huge amount that can be spent out of it. <clears throat> okay. Anybody have any comments, questions, concerns about that? No? Okay. That'd be very helpful. Uh, okay, so discussion of uh, non union salary recommendations. that discussion. Right. Thank you. <clears throat> These are the proposed salary uh, salary um, recommendations for next year. Um, what they do, they represent is roughly a two percent uh, salary adjustment for all the non-union uh, staff, and um, this is in step with uh, kind of the process that had been going on before my tenure where uh, what was negotiated with the, uh, the CBA, with the, uh, the union contracts, is translated uh, here. The difference being that the teachers took a 1%, a 2.5, and a 2.5, 2.5, and but it's 6% over three years. And this is the same for the non-union um, employees. So they get 2%, 2%, and 2%. So this is just continuing what has been going on since last year. Plus a step? Uh, there's no, there's, well, there's no, there, 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 there are, are steps here in Deerfield, yes. Yeah. And how much, you know, how much do you, look, you know how much a step would be? Well, it's right here. So um, if you look at our, the first person, that's the secretary. Mm -hmm. She's at 2024. Her mm -hmm. step would be 2060 to 2066. And then 2% on that would put it at 2107. So I've listed it here what the steps are. Okay, thank you. And um, I just noticed that um, the one of the custodians uh, is at a uh, left blank. That does not mean he's not entitled to a raise. It means that I started this and had to go look something up and forgot to go back and finish it. Gotcha. <laughs> I'm sure he'll appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> and I apologize. But it would be the same 2%. 
As a curiosity question, um, or along the lines of, uh, in the past, there has been an attempt to look at what the town has done for their similarly um, covered employees. So, um, what I don't know what we just approved on town meeting floor for uh, the classification bylaws and the uh, salary schedules there. So when I came on board, um, Deerfield is <coughs> the only elementary school that has a step, a step schedule. schedule. Um, and now that you bring up that point, I, I, because I didn't know that was happening until I went to town meeting, mm -hmm. it may be something we want to take a look at and, and see that we are in line. Yeah. Um, but as Dr. Carey said, um, prior right. to her coming, the, the track was right. 6% 6% for union and non-union, but it's, it's breaking out differently. Matching, matching the no negotiated Correct. collective bargaining, yes, I, I understand But I haven't that, aligned. I didn't right. check to see, but we I will take a look at that, and yeah. I will um, bring that forward to you in, in June to review. It's just something that's come up in the past, and, yeah. and uh, it does get noticed. So <coughs> usually it's because we do not want town offices did, but I don't think that's the case this year. But I find it, it interesting like because if, if they're talking, if they did their salary scale for town employees, people in this building are town employees, so Correct. why weren't they included in, I, in their... In I'm their just saying you don't find them on the classification Correct. Scale, right, I don't think. No, you don't. So I, you I, don't. That to me is off. So I know it might be it. something we're taking to the town's personnel committee, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Or, well, or do we want to separate it? I leave that that's to, a good to the question. administration to think. I Thank do you. know that uh, we're going to work on that a little bit more this year, mm -hmm. and um, it, that's a good question to see where these fall in. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should all be on the same schedule. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, was the central office staff uh, treated similarly, and Everyone were they in our prior budget? Yes. Um, okay. <coughs> Okay, anybody have any um, further questions? Or and this will be voted next month? Yeah, we'll next month. Okay. Okay. But before, um, we used to bring this to you in June, and, and you used to look at it and vote it in the same night, and, and some school committees felt uncomfortable with that. Mm -hmm. So be, starting with last year, we started bringing it to you in May for your consideration, perfect. and you would vote it in June. That would give you time to, to you know, sit with yeah. it. Yeah, and that would give newly elected members a chance to Correct. Get their feet wet with it. Okay. Uh, the next item we are actually going to table um, um, the review of the summary report <coughs> on the superintendent's evaluation. That's going to go on to our June meeting. Mm -hmm. um, I should offer an explanation so for you if you want. Sure. <laughs> okay. Do you want to fall on a sword? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Do you want an explanation? Well, I think the audience might be interested. Okay. Yeah. Let's get the, uh, <laughs> the review of the superintendent <laughs> is a, a um, is a process that goes through the joint Union 38 school committee, and the committee met uh, two and a half weeks ago, two yep. three weeks ago, April 7th, April 6th, uh, somewhere in that oh. timeline, okay. uh, as, as a group. And it was actually at our April meeting, so I guess it's a month ago. Mm -hmm. um, at that point in time, the uh, uh, um, Superintendent Carey provided her self-evaluation and the documents necessary to, for our, each individual member of the Union 38 Joint Committee to conduct their own evaluations and complete a document. And the um, document, which I don't have a copy this evening, um, there was a checklist and ratings that they were all to complete. I'm the chairman of the Union 38 Joint Committee, and to date I've received, um, out of the, all of the school committees, I've received the evaluations from the Town of Deerfield only. So it's very, been very difficult for me to uh, conduct the uh, evaluation that re summary that was supposed to have been done for this evening. I do intend to uh, try and complete a summative report which will be reviewed with Superintendent Carey on Friday of this week and I'm hopeful that I will certainly see more responses to uh, my continued outreach for responses so 
Uh, that's why I don't have anything this evening. I just haven't had the data to complete the evaluation. Do you evaluate even if you don't get those? I'm getting to a point where I'm, I could be backed into a corner. Oh, I was just wondering. Yeah, um, and I have to get down to central office. I, I believe there are a few down there, but they were supposed to return them either to me personally or electronically, and I think been, there might be a few that are in the central office, <coughs> and, and I have not had, I have not gotten, <coughs> have some homework to do over the next 48 hours. <laughs> so. My apologies, I don't have anything to present this evening. So. No apologies. No. <coughs> okay, so, um, John is not here to report on a collaborative. Yeah, he said there wasn't a meeting since wasn't our last. Meeting? Yep. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Janine, maybe we can move to your principal's report. Sure, you should have a copy in front of you. Um, just some things that we're dealing with right now and working on for the month of May. Placement. So we do placement historically at the end of May. This year we're doing placement on spend two days on May 30th, I believe, and May 1st. And that's a time when teachers come together and they work to create well-balanced classrooms for next year. So a letter was sent home to parents to offer them an opportunity to provide input into their child's placement. So I've been receiving those and those get shared with the placement team. And then this year, teachers were asking if they could revisit the placement process. So what we did was we formed a committee, and uh, we had the meeting. Actually, they were really efficient. We met <coughs> after school. And um, one of the pieces that they felt was really important was to create a way that special teachers could offer input into the placement process, art, music, PE. So a form was created that was distributed to specialist teachers. They worked on it during one of the early release Fridays and some of them finished it up after that. The information was shared with classroom teachers and um, we're hoping that's gonna be a positive addition to the placement process. So we finished placement pretty much before the end of the school year and um, with the exception of students that might arrive during the summer. So I appreciate the work of that team and um, they did a nice job, and I, I feel pretty confident it's going to be a good process. Um, the other piece is IA placement. So each year at this time of the year, we also start to have conversations with special education liaisons about where IAs, what their assignments will be for next year. Um, because typically they're working with students on IEPs and supporting classroom teachers and liaisons. So the IAs had requested to um, form a committee to create a survey. We had had surveys we've given them each year around this time. Um, and we thought, okay, if you want to create your own survey, that's great. So let's try to use that. So they worked on that. Um, the surveys went out. They were due today. That information is going to be shared with liaisons because they will be meeting. In the placement process, one of the first pieces that we do, you talk all about a lot of variables to placement. Students um, who have programming needs, they get placed first. So we look at that and then we you know, place other students. So those teachers will be working Friday morning um, during one of our weekly meetings that we have with them to work on that and they'll have the information from the IAs. So, Talent show, we had our rehearsal today. We have another rehearsal tomorrow night over at Frontier. It went really smoothly. Um, there are about 26 or 27 acts that we have and um, the talent show gig is Friday night, so if you're interested in spending Friday night over at Frontier, it starts at 6 o'clock. So um, we're really, we're always impressed. It's, yeah. it's, it's a good time. We do a great job. Have a good time. And then lastly, the one piece, uh, I want to thank Jillian Andrews that she is providing a parent workshop tomorrow evening. Unfortunately, we can't go because we'll be at the dress rehearsal, um, but she's always offered her time to present at PTA meetings and do parent education workshop sessions. And this one, she's, I have some bullets there for you that she's focusing on writing. Truly an area where she is an expert. And um, just talking to parents about how to start up writing journals, how to encourage them to write over the summer, um, different kinds of writings and strategies and suggestions. So she's a, a very strong presenter. She presents 
um, actually throughout the county she's presented she's known for her expertise in writing and this we're lucky to have her yeah so um, great. i hope that parents will be able to attend that tomorrow night at six o'clock that's for um all of the schools in the district yes oh, nice. so that's yeah, an that's advertising effort. Effort. Oh, yes yeah that's excellent. and then one piece that was not on here um the dedication for the library we i want to thank amy batisti who's here tonight she formed together um, a committee to be able to work on the planning for that. And we're happy to say that on June 21st during our all school meeting at 2 p.m., and we hope you can make it, there will be a dedication for Bet Schmidt to yes. name the library the Bet Schmidt Library. Wonderful. So it's gonna be a very special event led by students and um, we're, we're thrilled about it. And I wanna again thank Amy for her efforts with that. And that's all I have. Um, can I just ask this? Are any um, teachers switching grades this year? Yes, one teacher from second to first because we're going to move from three sections of second grade to two and then we have to increase in first grade. So there will be one shift. Um, that teacher did offer to make the switch. Yeah. Great. Uh, any questions for Janine? No? All right. Thank you. Sure. <clears throat> uh, Superintendent Carey? Yes. Thank you so much. So I just wanted to uh, reiterate that much of uh, April was spent dedicated to discussing and defending our budgets. Uh, the three town meetings have already occurred, and our final one will be May 11th in Conway. And I'd like to thank everyone who came out and supported our schools. I'd also like to mention that it's a very important week this week in uh, the education world. And I was with about 50 superintendents today, and we, you know, I picked up this and this and this, and I put it all together and I, I ran it by a couple of my colleagues. So this is what I'd like to say. Uh, this week is Teacher Appreciation Week, and I'd like to take a moment to thank each and every one of our outstanding teachers who give of themselves to their students and to their profession every day to prepare our collective students to have a fulfilling and meaningful future. Our teachers are preparing our children to be balanced, global citizens, in an increasingly internationalized, technology-driven, and fast-changing world. They design learning experiences to guide our children to envision a future where they, where they will not only live in a global world, but they bring them to a level where they are also able to change it. At the end of the day, it's what the school committee is here for, it's what the expectations of the community and the taxpayers are, but it all comes together behind a magic door where our gifted and wonderful teachers work with our most important resources, our children. The children are the core of everything we do. Thank you, teachers. And it's generally not, you know, we don't do a back and forth a whole lot of that. Um, but I wanted to bring it up to ask what would the mechanism be? What, because um, there's different levels, mm -hmm. but is that a, something the school council can talk about? PTO and administration, teachers, you know, how, you know, how would we address that? I've been hearing <laughs> a lot about communication. And I've been, a, I've been a principal, I was a principal for seven years before I moved into central office and became an assistant superintendent, now superintendent. I, so as I watch, because I'm not hands-on, 
you know, I, I work with the principals, but I'm not hands on. I watch the kind of information that comes out. The PTA is tremendous with the information that they provide. Uh, there are always are these updates, and they're coming at 11 o'clock at night, <laughs> like reading these. Um, I, I do believe that there's um, teachers sent home notices. There's a, a school kind of a newspaper. Um, we use school messenger. And, um, but I think the biggest thing for me was the teachers had expressed that they felt that they were kind of out of the loop. And not so much not knowing, but not having a part in the decision making. So they're kind of like, they're saying not communication, but I think there's a lot of communication. A lot of it's rumors, a lot of it's not true, but there's a lot of communication. But the teachers were able to form this committee, and I don't know the name of it, but they meet every two weeks with a committee of administrators. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's Tina, Janine, Louise, and McCarthy, Kim, and Chris. For being being reps. Reps. Yes. So there's reps from the whole building. So there's like an open channel of communication there. Um, I'm hearing that the IAs are allowed, they're doing a survey, they, they want to give input on their uh, classes. I'm hearing that the parents have been able to put input on where they'd like their, for whatever reasons of, about <coughs> having a child in place. So I would, I would like to see and understand kind of the specifics of what kind of communication isn't getting there. Um, and, and, and is it really the communication that they're not hearing? Or, are they, or is it something with the decision making that they don't like the decisions and so they're saying that there's no communication? Or in the case of what they're asking, <coughs> what's going on now? You know, because legally, you know, you just, you just can't. So I, would say in the same light that the teachers have been open to come every two weeks and express, you know, and actually put their thoughts together with their teams, come in with legitimate things, you know, what's going on here, how are we doing this, they worked through the budget, they literally helped us figure out what we needed to do to be able to pull out some costs because we're losing school choice money and that's going to hit us hard. So they were able to help us make those decisions. Um, so I'd like, I guess, in the same sense that the teachers and the IAs are able to now meet and talk, maybe we could, you know, do something with parents. But is there a school council? Um, I'm just, you know, that maybe that those kinds of things could come forward. And what kind of information, what kind of communication would people like to see? versus what they're, what they're hearing. And, and, but that would be a good way, too, to help people um, feel more comfortable so that when, and, and I think it was referred to tonight as rumors, when rumors come out, that they, they can go, they know they can call right away and say, I heard this rumor, is it really true? And, and maybe we can put them at ease, that kind of thing. So, um, there are, there is no secret where I, I feel and I believe, especially as superintendent, that I'm very transparent and I'm, I, I believe what's going on in the school is transparent. I'm not, you know, I'm not seeing where the teachers are being allowed to meet and allowed to talk or, or. Maybe, uh, okay, I think. Yeah, yeah. thanks, David. Um, so, maybe if I can make a suggestion, because I think what I was hearing from April, uh, from was was a comment from PTA, and so I took that as a uh, not as a teacher. Well, I, I mean, I, I would say that's more me. I, I don't know that I want to say I'm representing right. all of the PTA. That no, is I don't me. mean that. Yeah. Okay. Let me just um, let me just finish. Uh, so uh, what I was hearing from a parent uh, is, is a parent uh, issue around communications, and not so much the. Teachers. I mean, there's so many levels of communication we have. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a whole bunch of communication between teachers, uh, amongst teachers <coughs> and administration that, frankly, parents don't need to know about, I'm sure, because, you know, it's internal school stuff and whatever. Um, but I, if there are issues um, that you, as a parent and as PTA president, um, 
think could be improved around the administration to parent community, then I, I would suggest maybe, maybe not now in the next month, but over the summer, because I know people here work over the summer, uh, uh, that maybe you get together and just talk about that and talk about all the different avenues that are out there and what could be improved. I'm assuming that people feel that their teachers communicate with their classroom parents, okay. But if there are issues there, then maybe those can be talked about. There's so many different layers of it, but what I heard was something around probably administration of school to parents. And so I think that you would, should probably follow up with administration and, and, and talk about that. Obviously, teachers who are out there, obviously you guys have all developed something new over the last maybe year or even last year around in school stuff and you know that hopefully is, is either going well or, or, or getting better or is just a new system that everybody's in, invested in. One so. of the things that we've heard David <coughs> is that the teachers and the staff they have um, poor morale, their morale is low. Well. So this was kind of put together to help people you know bring out what, what can we do, you know, um, outside of the fact that we all know that teaching is incredibly intense these days. It is very hard. And um, what can we do to help? What can we do to make things easier? But the, so we've got decision making, we've got communication, and then we hear a lot of the staff and the teachers feeling low morale. And so, you know, and, and again, they've been pretty proactive in trying to pinpoint where's this, the low morale, where's the lack of communication, where's, you know, this is what we can decide together, this is unfortunately not. Mm -hmm. So, um, but that's, we take it seriously, we think about it, and I do think that maybe perhaps in the summer something with the parents. And I right, yeah, I wasn't parents. at all suggesting that you weren't taking it seriously, I was actually trying to compartmentalize uh, and and was yeah I'm not hearing anything about that teacher communication because I think that's being worked on um, but around the parent thing I think that if, if, there's, if there's a sense of things having dropped off perhaps from a, a place they were a year or two ago then then um, I think you should have a discussion with the administration about it because that's where it should start as opposed to some kind of top-down mandate from us um, without it first being discussed you know, amongst the relevant parties. So, Trevor? So I think, I think we can always do better communicating. I mean, there's never, there's never a time when we, we can't communicate better. And um, an issue such as we're having now, um, if, if, you know, I know we can't talk about certain things, as, as, and certain things come up so fast that, that you, can't, you can't get out ahead of them. But if, but if maybe um, we could do a better job of laying out what we are doing, how we're going forward, how are we going to handle the next several things so that parents could then communicate with their children, this is what's happening, this is where we're going, you're going to be fine. Um, I think that, that, would do, that would go a long way to um, help, help our children, help our families, because right now there's been, you know, a, a week or two of just not knowing because nobody can talk and there's issues coming so fast and we don't know and we hear but we don't know so we can't we can't jump to conclusions we just have to wait and let processes roll out the main issue though is what we can discuss and what we should be discussing on um, what we're doing and what we're doing to go forward and here's what we've ha had to happen for a variety of reasons could be anything um, but here's where we're going and here's where we're going to go and you're going to be fine and this is the process we're going. This project is going to go off fine. This one's going to go off fine. You know, don't worry, we've got your back kids. We're going to be okay. So I think the more we can do that quickly and get out ahead of a project, you know, or a problem, um, the better off we are. So, and I do agree. I think we should continue to look at ways we can discuss over the summer if, if people or even teachers or parents still are, are in the dark on a few things, we can always talk and uh, find ways to kind of communicate better. It's especially hard on the sixth graders. It is tough right now. It's really, really hard on them. And they had concerts planned and mm -hmm. things like that that are, it's hard. It is. And, and 
we don't even know what to say. So. So that yeah, mm -hmm. and, and and maybe no one has the answer yet either right. too. So that's a hard thing. To, you know, it's a hard hole to fill. So you try to figure out how, how we can do that, but get out ahead of it. Say this is what we don't know. This is what we do know, and this is where we're going, and we're going to be okay. Is the school committee fully in the loop? Um, as much as we can be uh, legally, but we really, you know, <clears throat> there's a lot we can't know too. We're, we're you can't go into executive session and have. C correct. You can't do that. Um, there are certain processes you have to go through to do that, and we're not at that level yet. Um, the looking into hasn't been completed enough to even have an executive session. So there's a lot, you know, we just have to wait. We don't know, so we're going to wait. But we recognize, uh, and, and I, I want you to understand the compassion and the empathy we have for the kids. Mm -hmm. This wasn't Nothing was done lightly, and, and I can understand. I can understand. I can't I have a do um, I have a sixth grader, a fourth grader. Has so nothing has been said to the children about why certain staff are no longer here. Uh, I don't know because I'm not in the school day to day, so I don't know. So if anything's been said like to who, your child, but nothing would could be. Call. Would we call Ms. Hyle to find out what's going on? Like, I had no idea there was no select course. I would have sent my sixth grader here for eight o'clock in the morning, not you know knowing that there was. So I mean, that, that's what I'm. Right. So that's what I'm saying. As a parent, would I call you, not to get information or like, pry, but like as a parent, like what what am I telling my two boys? Well, you, I mean, you, know, you, should always, you should always feel free, yeah, to reach out to your classroom teacher and but, then hopefully... But I've talked to teachers and they're like, we don't know. Maybe they can't, I don't know. They're just like, the so they're so they're 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 Well, they're not going to give you, yeah, look, <laughs> you're not going to get per details about the personnel want, issues. Want to know the but if you want to know the schedule, absolutely, you should, you can call the front office and they should be able to tell you whether or not a particular event is happening or is regularly scheduled. I mean, so, I would hope that that can be... It sounds like that's the problem. Be some message, <laughs> some kind of message that's appropriate to I mean, the situation so that can be given out. I mean, there is a lot of communication in the school, and like, and I know I can, I've touched base with all my teachers and my boys have had, and I've gotten calls back or emails back. It's been wonderful, but I think something like this so big that it, it's a staff member that now is gone. You know, for whatever reason, there needs to be an email or something. I would think, or some kind of communication saying, for the time being, this is what we can say, and this is what it is. I mean, it, obviously, uh, the administration is hearing that there's a sense that some communication is lacking, and so hopefully they can uh, address those particular issues that are that are out there. Um, okay. So, um, communication issues. There's a there's a hearing about that. Hopefully, you will take that up uh, and do something with that um, over the summer and. Administration, hopefully, I, I can assure you, I suspect that administration is communicating uh, as much as they uh, can uh, and will continue to do that as much as they can up to a point. All right. Um, anybody else have any other questions? Mary, was that? That's good. Thank okay. you. For okay. 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 And we will take one more public comment. And a broader question is, yes. Superintendent was just uh, talking about morale and all that. So, you know, obviously there's been a lot of... I'm sorry, talking about what? Just the morale and, and the yeah. state of things. So, obviously a lot of uh, difficult budget topics over the last couple of years, um, which is not easy for anybody, and I don't, don't <laughs> envy you guys having to deal with that. So, as you talk about communication, you know, out to the community, could you please describe the communication that goes on within the schools and within the administration after the school committee in order to hear from the frontline teachers as to what they're seeing and hearing and feeling, having to deal with the different changes that have had to be implemented due to budgets. What's the standing process right now? How does that communication happen? Uh, well, I mean, I, in terms of the budget process, you mean? To, to get a feel from the frontline staff up to senior administration and the school committee. So how are the frontline staff doing? What's, what's, their, what's their communication channels to get to yourself and the superintendent? Um, well, then they're generally so it's a little tricky. So we we are you have to remember the school committee's job is not um, you know as tempting as it is 
for folks to think it and for us to do it, uh, we are not involved in the personnel type decisions. We're, we're involved in budgetary decisions, mm -hmm. planning decisions, that kind of stuff. So I can just speak to sort of budget stuff. Okay. Obviously we have open budget you know, process. It goes through a bunch of hearings. People are welcome to come. We hear from the public. We hear from teachers. My understanding is, and shut me off if I'm misstating it, but that prior to some of those meetings, um, there are meetings with teachers coming together to talk with Janine about uh, the budget uh, and how that budget is percolating up and what it may bring and what it may not bring. And so I know that those discussions take place out of our, uh, out of our, you know, purview. Um, and so I don't, and if you're talking about, I mean, I believe the teachers um, have been asked for their input uh, on, on, on administration and, and 360 evaluations and things like that. Okay, can I direct the question to Superintendent Kerry? No, you sort of have to direct it through me as the chair. Okay, so let's go to you. Yeah. I'm just trying to understand the process because, you know, you talk about communication process? and the different aspects. Which process are you? Communication process. Okay, well, we just had a whole discussion about communication. So which kind of communication do you mean? The process of verifying the state of the frontline staff that deal with the students day to day. You talk about the morale of said of these frontline staff. But what's the? I'm just trying to understand the process within the operational aspects of the school system, specifically, I guess, the elementary school, since that's what we're talking about, mm -hmm. of how the change is managed and understood, and the impacts are understood. Because um, you know, it's one thing to it's a different thing to be in, in the classrooms and to, to feel it than to be administration feels. I'm just wondering how what people are seeing and feeling and hearing on the front lines, how that's translating through, up through administration and then to the school committee. And what's that process? Well, sure. As I said earlier, um, this year we uh, put the whole budget together. We came in at a, um, a, a, I forget what it was, but it was, it was quite a high percentage. And we realized with the lack of school choice because the decision was made by the school committee to stop taking in school choice students. We're losing school choice money because we really want to just educate our own. So at that time, we needed to kind of balance that one piece because we're looking at a $200,000 deficit over two years. Janine went in with her group. She has a group of teachers, um, a teacher kind of rep from each of the grade levels, and they discussed what they went through the budget, they explained what everything meant, and they uh, came up with some suggestions, and then um, they worked a little bit harder, and then we came up with some other. Um, so the, the group that she's referring to, Darren, is it's called the BCT, Brainstorming Collaboration Team. We started that, uh, I don't know, I don't know what month it was, December, January, we meet bi-weekly. Um, there are about 12 or 14 people maybe on the committee and that process for communication is they people are represented by someone in their wing if there's a concern about something that they'd like to see change in terms of a practice or it could be anything related to curriculum related to facilities related to any kind of policy they have they can bring it to their representative we have a full agenda we talk about it we brainstorm and problem solve together because we want to hear from them what I may not know how that decision may impact them if we go one way versus another way um, in terms of the budget you know it's tricky with staff because as Dr. Carey mentioned we were looking at cuts that were are getting bigger because of the school choice issue which that involves personnel and when you're requesting it's a tricky thing so we offer we ask the representatives of that committee to go back to their wings to get input from teachers about budget reductions but you have to remember it's uncomfortable because you're almost asking them to almost to talk about another colleague is that position valuable is this position of course all positions are valuable because we're not at a point where we can just look at general supplies and reduce the supply budget by 15 percent that won't help us get to where we have to from the bottom line. So, but this, this group does meet um, bi-weekly and they come and we have some really great conversations. Some of them are difficult and um, 
meeting minutes are shared for the entire staff. Meeting minutes are, yep, thank you, Tina. Uh, after we go through, we have it on the board, the meeting minutes are approved by the group, shared with the staff immediately, and then we move on to the next agenda. We also have a, a meeting every Friday called a case management meeting that is includes about 16 to 17 people, all special ed liaisons related to service providers. And um, they bring the agenda items again. They decide what the agenda items are, and then we address their concerns and we work together to mm -hmm. solve issues. So we're, we're meeting um, <coughs> with those groups. We're meeting almost every Friday. Yeah. 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 Right. A lot, there's a lot of communication, David. Is, uh, do the minutes go to Superintendent Kerry? Are you on the? Uh, you're on the all DES list, yes. yes. Yeah. And the director of curriculum and the director of early childhood, so yes. Right. Do. And the reason I ask, I mean, I know the budget process is very difficult and we've all kind of bore witness to, bearing witness to that, but it's then the real hard part is managing it afterwards and trying to make sure that the quality of education doesn't erode and that everyone's still able to function at a high level in their classrooms. So that's, that's why I asked to try to see if there are, are concerns, how they're getting translated through to senior administration and um, then Coming forth this and that's meeting. why we include other administrators from central office, like the director of curriculum and um, the director of early childhood, because some of those are curriculum related and, and things that maybe we can't resolve as a as building administration because it's something that impacts all of you in 38. So. And I've also made myself available. I've attended some. Of, I've attended one uh, staff meeting of Janine so that all teachers had. Um, the opportunity to ask questions yeah. of how the project process work, how how the state funding works, and we had a, a you attended effort. several, two or three, and we and it's good conversation because the more the teachers understand how the process works, the, the more they do take an ownership and or at least have a better understanding of how it works. And I'm always happy to attend any meeting to educate our teachers how our fund our, how our funding streams work, how we allocate funds and why the percentages are so out of whack, <laughs> unfortunately. I'm, I'm stumbling over what I want to say. <laughs> I, mean, I, sit and, I sit and wear two hats here because I work in two different school environments, but uh, I have been on this committee for a few years and, um, you know, it's a, it's a continual process this town does a remarkable, has done a remarkable job and continues to do a remarkable job of supporting education in our schools, not just Deerfield Elementary, but Frontier. Um, and the budgeting process is painful and it's getting more painful every year. Um, and the, the big thing for us is we're talking about an erosion of school choice funds that have over the years have provided services in this school that not many schools in Western Mass or even the Commonwealth of Massachusetts have. Um, so we've had a wonderful tight-knit com tight community. We're facing hard decisions. The administration works, I think, extremely hard and in an exemplary way to find creative means of maintaining as much of the services as possible every year <coughs> as our, resource, our financial resources dwindle. Um, Unfortunately, as financial resources dwindle, as, as they've said, there aren't many areas that we haven't already paired to the bone that uh, allow us the flexibility to not cut staff if we have substantial decreases in what the funding outlook is for each year. And talking about colleagues, talking about staff cuts, everything hits everyone equally as hard, not just the... Not just the <coughs> teachers, not just the students, not just parents. It also hits our active administration, our active non-teaching staff, right up through the central office and, and even to the school committee. It's not fun to sit here and talk about cuts. It's not fun to have, have to make those decisions. It, it may have been more fun in years gone by to sit and say, well, we've got school extra school choice money. Where can we spend it? Um, well, it certainly was easier to say that. Uh, uh, that's why we have a strings program. That's why we have the strength in our music and arts programs that you folks have talked about tonight and that this committee has stated we support and will continue to support to the best of our abilities. We can't make, you know, 
promises far into the future. But I look at this, my, my role is, our role is policy and budget, and handing those off to the administration to uh, implement. Um, I look to see that we have the policies and budgets in place to support the mission of the school. And, and I will stand up at town meeting floor and we'll take that to the town fathers if it requires a 5% increase. Um, then that's what I would fight for on town meeting floor. Uh, so, I, you know, I can only speak for myself, but I think I, I will echo virtually everyone sitting in, in this room in looking out for the interests of the student. It's tough to answer questions for kids when you don't have answers. Mm -hmm. and, and I get it. I mean, my kids are in their 30s, so I'm not <laughs> dealing at the same level, but I have to answer some of their questions still. But I, it's just, you know, I, I hope the community can communicate. And, it, and I hope if the community here doesn't feel they're getting the information that they need, they step forward, they talk to their teachers, they don't get the answers from the teachers, they talk to this, the direct school administration, they don't get the, you know, the answers they need there. They direct you know, constructive questions and, and uh, concerns right on up the ladder to the, to the school committee and the superintendent if that's what's necessary. So, I don't know. Yeah. I ran it. Let me just, and I'll just say a couple, I mean, just following what you said, if you look around and you read the newspapers, just our local paper, I mean, Pioneer right now, that district, I mean, you just sort of ache for them if you read the paper and the cuts that they're gonna, about to endure and the number of teachers that are gonna, you know. So I would just su suggest that um, sometimes it's easy to, you know, the class is half full, not half empty. It's, uh, it's hard sometimes, but when you, you know, try to be positive, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, energy can be contagious. And so when you hear something, you know, try to either get to the bottom of it or, you know, try to be more positive about the, the things that we, uh, that we do have. Because in many ways, uh, this community is a lot luckier than, uh, than others. So we should also be thankful. Not to say we shouldn't always be striving to do better than we, than we are, mm -hmm. but um, I think a little positive, um, positive energy is, is warranted when we can provide it. So, uh, I just uh, had one thing to say and we can go yeah. out. Um, yeah. I just wanted to congratulate yeah, Ken, said it right. on, his, Ken? Uh, on his win. Oops. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Very happy to have you back. Okay. Was there an election? Yes, they were. That's kind of what I said when I got the memo on Tuesday saying Am I up I again? reelected. I forgot to vote. I, I'm embarrassed to say. Yeah. Oops. I, I need so. it. What's that? <laughs> so. All right, so anything else on this committee? No? Motion. Okay. So motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All right. So moved. All in favor.